Hello and welcome to the Pro Detailer Magazine podcast. You find us at the end of season three. It's been a fun one. It's 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 gone on definitely. It's <laughs> it's happened. It's definitely happened. I was here for it. I know. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, we decided to do a little additional podcast because normally we have eight episodes, and for reasons that will become clear later, uh, we only have seven. So we thought we'd infill and do a cheap eighth with just me and Ian vaping away, drinking our Red Bulls, and um, nattering about what's what's been occurring lucky sausages you <laughs> um but the first thing i want to do is actually just a review of the podcast we've done because we kicked off with john hole yes um who's been wanting to come on the podcast for ages we've been wanting to come on the podcast for ages and finally no the, we've been wanting him to come on the podcast for ages. yes we haven't we haven't wanted to come on the podcast for oh no ages. no god no <laughs> um and uh, john as we know runs clean and shiny he did run co-run detailing world and he does co-run wax stock so he has got fingers in pies like no other mm. um, and it was great to catch up with him because he's he's been a, knocking around the industry for ages so he, he knows it inside out mr detailing himself indeed indeed some say um so it was great to catch up with john and lots of insight there um and then we kind of went forward and went backwards and went abroad at the same time and ended up in italy yes it really really screwed my internal timeline that but uh yeah our, our little trip over to god that was ages ago wasn't it it feels like it we've had another covid spike since then or some places have. Some probably have, yeah. yeah. And, and we have, but apparently, you know, we cancelled COVID, so it's fine. <laughs> it doesn't it exist anymore. I was on a plane yesterday, still have to wear masks all the time. I think that was just you. <laughs> Sir, you're scaring the children. <laughs> yes, this paper bag. Um, so, yeah, we went over and, um, I mean, what was your... Kind of Italy was fun. It was three days, and we went all around Rupes, as you'll see in issue fourteen of the magazine. Uh, we have a little write up on that, or quite a big write up on that. Um, and um, we sat down. It was the first. It was the afternoon of the first day when we sat down. Yes, with Francesco. Francesco and um, chatted things over. And no, that was that was an interesting trip. And then the, the, the good thing about actually going over and seeing these places in the flesh is you get a better idea of the actual scale. Yes, I, I think that's what surprised me about Rupert. You know, you you think of them as a big company, and you know, we've been we've been to other machine manufacturers before. We know to Flex, and they've got a very large Factory. compound. Yeah, um, but with Rupert, it was I don't want to say it, it, it was different because because they've got so many um, so many factions to their to their little yeah, empire sort of over sub factories. There. Yeah, and what they're what they're trying to do is to bring as much manufacturing as possible in house. Now that's quite well, relatively easy to do, I suppose, when you you're only making machines or mm -hmm. just one one aspect of machines, everything like that. But when you're trying to bring all the components, so all, so not just assembly, trying to make all the components in house, and you're trying to make all the backing plates and all the accessories and everything like that yeah. in house, it becomes a behemoth operation. And you know the t the team they've got working over there it was just really interesting to go around and actually meet them face to face, walk around, see what they're doing, see what's coming. Again, stuff we can't talk about yet. Yeah, but nice. Very interesting things coming. Well, that's the other thing, of course, is when we're there. I mean, it was at the very end of our trip with Rupert's that they unveiled something special that we can't talk about. Um, that we're just waiting to come out and we're just really hoping because it's very cool and we actually got hands on on a prototype um and it was that sort of thing and it also meeting the individual um factory managers from the different areas and the big boss man and the big boss man he was oh he was a classy man i, I aspire to, to have an existence like him I, i've gone on too much already but he's he's yeah class class act um so yeah that was that and then while we were still in uh, milan uh, we went to mafra and we caught up with Marco and the team. Yes, so it was podcast three, wasn't it? It was indeed. And he, uh, what a character. Talking of characters, I mean... Lovely chap. Yeah, he's 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 charming um, and passionate, like you don't see. You know, you imagine Mafra, uh, Labo Cosmetica, big corporate company, but actually it's run by, by I don't know quite what the word is, just... Uh, he's, he's so calm as well, isn't he? Really? I find him to be very calm. I, I don't for, think for, well for a guy that's that's again running one of these mega factory style places, and you look at everything they've got going on the plates they're they're juggling, and you know they've just opened a, a, a an operation in India now as well. Yeah, he was doing all sorts of signing and celebrating and sort of customary stuff. Um, I mean, I suppose you can be calm when you've just got you just have everybody else working around you with a little bit of fear. There was a bit of fear, but I think he, you, he, you, there's you pass out the stress. quite a lot of yeah micromanagement going on. But no, he's what I what I liked is that he runs a corporate operation, but he's not a suit. He's I mean, he's always in a suit, a remarkably good well cut suit but he's not um 
he doesn't feel like a corporate lawyer type. He feels he's still passionate about he's what he's doing. He's interested in what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. He's not just a numbers man. Um, whereas a lot of companies, and I think it's to do with being family run. Because Especially when you're second generation. Exactly. He's not been chipped in. A lot of companies, if they need a CEO, they go onto the, I don't know, findaceo.com and they ship somebody in whose background might be running, I don't know, an airline or something different and they just hop between the different places and then there's some... He's not done anything this industry so he doesn't know what can't be achieved. <laughs> well, there is that, but also I find... I it's, it's I, I I don't know. It's my irritation with big corporates, whereby something goes wrong. There's a debacle, like this whole PO thing, and um, somebody you know a head rolls, and the CEO says, "Oh, I resign because I've you know made mistakes." Well, two problems there. Cut One is someone's head for a start. Well, the two problems. Firstly, it probably wasn't in this in the PO case. Probably was, but in, in a lot of cases, it's not because they by the time they join, you know, CEOs only have a lifespan of about three years at a company, and then um, so they they get blamed for stuff that isn't their fault, and then they say they're resigning as if they're then going to go and live on the street hell no that within three months they're ceo of yet another company and they just sort of do the switcheroo every yeah, they're, they're, three they're the figurehead for for mistakes and they get a golden handshake at the end of it to uh, say sorry for those mistakes and they hit your reputation but here, here's yeah. a list of other people that will hire you yeah ex exactly exactly whereas the point being is that with marco second generation he hasn't been shipped in he knows what he's doing he's passionate about it um and um no i, I think it's it's a it's 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 a good example mm -hmm. a good example but anyway moving back from uh Milan. We go to Devon, in fact. Well, she came here, Nicola came here from Devon, Nicola Reed of 55 Details. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it was, she was our first lady podcaster. Yes. Um, and uh, it was, I felt that was, was one a, of our most popular episodes by by uh, uh, by stats. That's interesting. That's interesting. It was very stressful for me. And I mean, Nicola's lovely, but the topics we were covering and the sort of topics that I put my foot in, um, and kind of women in the detailing industry and stuff like that. And I'm just so terrified of making a tit of myself. Well, more of a tit of myself. Can't say tit. <laughs> <laughs> <Done it>. uh, <laughs> no bloody swearing um and um yeah but it was it was good and i felt it needed to be sort of talked about and we encouraged that sort of thing and no it was it was it was an interesting insight from different side of things and she's yeah. doing very well she's yeah she it. had she had one of um one of your cars in for the wet sanding uh, yeah hang on we need to dispel this rumor because i keep on getting accused of it being my car so i mean did you own it I did at well, one point. Yours. I owned it for about three weeks. I never even saw it. I bought it blind on eBay. And then um, D2 Doctor bought it off me to restore. And so everybody's looking at this saying, oh, is that Bert's car? It's like, Bert doesn't have a £20,000 Audi. No, he paid 1500 quid for it at eBay as a wreck. So it's basically it's the car that you should have had all along. Um, yeah, but could never have afforded it. You bought, so. you, you bought it for very little money, spent a little bit on it and sold it for a bit of a profit. A very small Unlike every profit. single other no, <laughs> that's not true. I've been making money on cars left, right, and centre. Uncrashable 2 is a case in point. Yeah, in bits. That yeah. doesn't count. It does count. It was money in, money out. It just involved a lot of like cut well, fingers. and, and One of those sharks that goes in and uh, takes companies that are doing okay, breaks them apart their pieces. And, uh, All right, now you're just being insensitive. I'm still upset. I've, I was re-watching a video that I made about Uncrashable 2 being like broken and then towed away, the shell being hoisted up. I onto love a, that one. Oh, Brilliant. Brilliant film, that. Um, I get in trouble with the missus because she hears, I watch it on the throne and she hears through the door the music and she recognises the music from the track. Are you getting sad about Uncrashable 2 again? Are you, no. Are you cry-pooing again? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, that's fun. And, and say so that essay um, over the last couple of days uh, was been finished and new bonnet's gone on and it's just, just about to be dispatched, which is great news because, A, it means the end of a long restoration and a, a lovely car has been restored to the road. Well done, Michaela. Uh, and, B, the good news is it means Michaela's got more space to work on my cars, which are both sadly in need of stuff but we will do how is fritz in need of stuff he hasn't done anything for three years i started him last weekend we'll, we'll add it there was an explosion okay. of, of of goo everywhere I won't. from your the car <laughs> <laughs> the car um we will do a fleet update towards the end of this podcast so um we will not get sidetracked from that next we had uh lovely matthew who, yes. who was um, came down on a marathon tour of a race team and stuff like that all the way from sunny Scotland. Um, and um, Angel Wax has been going places for years, but it's just sort of... I wouldn't. Would you say exploded? Exploded probably sounds. I wrong. wouldn't say exploded. No, that's probably. Well, I go on planes too often, so. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I, I. It's just exponential growth. So you get to this point where now they've got so Expo much. What? Exp 
exponential. Exponential. I thought it was exponential. I think I said that too. <laughs> yeah. I don't really do words. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I do words. <laughs> Good job we don't write a magazine or anything. Well, it, That's yeah. why we have spell check. We need, we need a live spell check in our lives just underlining words that we say with little red squiggles halfway through. It, it does help. Oh, that's bizarre. I get this the whole time. So I get this with the whole PPD assessment thing. People say, oh, I can't do a, a theory assessment because I'm dyslexic. I'm like, don't let that stand away. I'm badly dyslexic and I write a magazine. I mean, badly, but but still, it, it happens. So, um, yeah, you just sort of fight through and, and, and rely on spell checker and, and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, Matt uh, came and what did he talk about? I'm, I, I don't know. I think I got sidetracked by his eyes, but what was he talking about? He was talking about how... Angel Rocks has grown internationally. Yes. Because it's all over the place. As you, as you were saying, it's, it's in 40-odd countries now. Worldwide. It's all over, yeah. And they've got a big Euro hub in the uh, Netherlands. Mm-hmm. Oh, and how he spent time in, um, with uh, John Hogg in a glue factory when, when he was younger. Oh, yes. They w- explained a hell of a lot. They blew each way. other up. Um, up. With, up. <laughs> yes. Up. <laughs> up. <laughs> The lawyers are circling. Um, yeah, no, well, no, more specifically, actually, John blew Matt up, or no, he blew himself. I'm so going to edit this down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it involved an explosion um, and stuff like that. So that was that was cool. And then we had a uh, celebrity indeed, John Delu. Yes. He came over and he did some mega testing in place. And we're going to talk about the mega test uh, as well a little later in this podcast. Um, Check out the video on his tubes, I think. Yes, he has done. He's got two videos. One has been released and one will come out after the mag. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, the blue Legacy Spec B bonnet that we used, I have had outside in the elements um, behind this very building. Um, so we shall go and check out how that's been surviving. It's had zero interference. Stop trying to from- attempt to go behind the building with this. <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, there's a bonnet back here. Yeah, there's well, some sweets on it as well. <laughs> the, hear the puppies. Well, the, the bonnet hasn't been interfered with, apart from we, we now have a friendly rat on the premises who is upsetting all the dogs. And Is he in the kitchen? No, no, oh, he's, he's out. He, literally, they can see him through the door, but he's faster and smarter than all of them and so and slightly larger than Farrow as well <laughs> yes, he's, he's quite a chunky monkey i'm not gonna lie has he been, um, has he been attacking the otter that doesn't exist no the otter exists and no the otter would win the otters are, are serious fearsome creatures have you, have you ever seen the um the otter street gangs videos no i saw tarka the otter and no, cried in, in um oh where is it i think it's in singapore oh there's yes. a the river goes through the, the, yeah, through the yeah, city yeah, yeah. and there are two gangs of otters that regularly come together and have, have like yeah, West Side Story style fighting, lots of clicking fingers. And- <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they might even be sea otters, which are even bigger and more fearsome. I saw sea otters um, off, off, a, off, well, in the sea, strange enough, and they're all lying on their back breaking shells with their bare flippers. It was impressive. I'm just looking at you in the eye while they're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Your next mate. Yeah. I, I actually, on the same trip, got nearly killed by a seal. Um, but anyway. No, no, no. Please. Tell, tell the story. <laughs> well, it was San Francisco. Seals are friendly. I got drunk. No, no, no sea lions, I think, maybe. They were on special platforms in San Francisco, and I thought it would be a good idea to go and say hello. Don't um, their manes get wet? Uh, their manes probably do get wet, but they've got teeth like vast dogs or like hyenas almost. They're, like they're, sea lions. Teeth like, like sea lions. Teeth, sea yeah. lions. <laughs> they're, they're quite... I wouldn't call them angry. I think they were just playing, but with really big scary teeth and and you know me i go so up to like when you you're out uh, walking the dogs and a massive alsatian c- comes up to you and starts growling at you oh he's just playing he's nice really no 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 he's taking my arm off love <laughs> yes. notice the arterial spray no well i'm awful at any animal i will go up to I, I go up to dogs that are clearly rabid and wanting to kill a human and i'll try and pet them and then i get bitten and everybody looks at me like i'm an idiot which is but a foaming idiot <laughs> yeah. slowly passing out and i do that with with all animals if I was in Africa, I would I would go up to a lion just to sort of you know see what they smell like and um, poke him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just uh, sing off key. It's a problem I've got. Yeah, <laughs> just way to die. Um, but that'd be a cool way to die though. He got ripped to shreds. Well, not actually from a first person point of view. Well, I mean, it's, it was, I'd say it'd be great in your gravestone, but there wouldn't be much to bury. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly. So that reduces costs. Uh-huh. Although I'd still want to be buried in a Subaru. So I don't think still have to reduce costs. Y- huh? I don't think we'd reduce costs. What, by burying Funerals are always expensive. They are. Well, particularly, I've got specific instructions to be buried in the Subaru. Um, you've, so you've been to too many funerals this year already. I, I have been to a lot of funerals. Everybody's bloody dying. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting nervous just sitting here, frankly. <laughs> yes. 
been a friend of mine. He got less than three months. Um, and you are mostly friend with ninety year old people, though. So I do. I, I seem to get on with the older generation better. Yes. They, they, we have cultural similarities, which I don't share with the likes of you. You, you have young. Cul- you have culture. This is new. <laughs> young whippers, snappers. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I, I'm, I'm, I'm older, older than you. Aren't I? You are older than me. Yeah. <laughs> even, even more so. I've now turned thirty eight. Have you? Yes. When did that? Happen? I'm an entire demographic to myself now. I'm not aware of wishing you happy birthday. When did you turn thirty eight? Uh, well, yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, um. The, Happy birthday. I'm, ha- I did, I happy? Didn't, just say birthday now. I didn't, once, you, I, well, once you reach 30, it's just birthday. Well, I didn't get you a present. acknowledge it. I'm feeling bad. I always insist on getting colleagues and, you know, friends presents. Well, I don't say that because otherwise there'll be people who, 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 who haven't received. But the people who I work directly with on a day-in, day-out basis, because I never get presents, so I always do it and then hand them over with a slightly smug, like, yeah, so where's mine? August 7th, <laughs> bitch. Um, but I forgot to do that this time. I got you something funny last time. I got you a T-shirt or a mug or something. Did I, you? Yeah, it was it was offensive, but you keep wearing it, which I thought was great. I liked it. Um, uh, yeah, it's me. F stop t shirt. F stop t shirt. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Photography. Actually, it wasn't too too offensive. Um, but anyway, yeah, we we are getting distracted. Late country. We talked to lovely David Kendall. Yes. Um, and uh, so, such a chilled guy. You feel slightly cold when you, he's in the room. He's so chilled. I, I, he, he just go. He just he come, comes in, sits down, and just goes into the laid back position. If yeah. We, if we had a recliners in here, no, he'd I, just be almost horizontal. No, I, th- I think you've misidentified that. I think he, yes, he is chilled, but I think it's because he. We have spent so much time with him. We went to France, which we'll no, cover. But that was before, him. was it? Yeah, we did the podcast before we went to France. God, I didn't realize that. Because well, in, in in the podcast we talked about going to, when we go, we're going to go oh, to France. God, I really should listen to these things. Um, yeah, no. Well, also, I mean, I've been drinking with Dave. We've both been completely to the point of can't remember our own name, let alone anyone else's name. You've carried his son upstairs, haven't you? I have carried his son, and and Harry, his son, is is um, how do we say this? Um, he's uh, he's 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 got gravitational pull. He's quite heavy, and he was on the third floor of the Rico Arena, which is now the Coventry Building Society Arena. I've remembered it now. Cla- classy name. Classy name, indeed. Way to go, marketed. <laughs> yeah, come here, Coventry. <laughs> and um, that, uh, yes. So we've 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 done we've done time, and um, that's why he's relaxed. I think, whereas most people are still kind of slightly nervous of the face, the beard. I'm a little bit jumpy. Yeah, yeah. We get that. We get that. So that was, I mean, season three. Um, and uh, we will be doing season four in the summer at some point. We well, there, there, there was a missing podcast in there. There was a missing podcast. So, yeah, this is a slightly delicate situation. So one of the early ones we recorded was probably my favourite podcast I've ever recorded in my whole life, all 37 years of it. Um, admittedly, only the last two of which have been recording podcasts. podcasts. But, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was a chappy who I've known who is the, one of the most he's, – he's what I would call a disruptor in the industry in a good way. Um, although not everybody views him in that way, um, really, really nice, charming guy, and he's he's made moves. He's 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 done some really kind of bold stuff in the industry, and he now works for a big UK company, um, which has also done extremely well. Um, and I'm sure part of that, at least, is is as a result of his his work for them. Um, Undoubtedly. And he was we were there talking about said company, and it was all positive stuff, to be honest. And we were talking about the industry, and he had some really good advice for detailers um, and some real insight with kind of first-hand experience that a lot of us lack because we don't clear clearing up a lot of misconceptions actually yeah, it was it was really good and then annoyingly uh the company he worked for vetoed the uh podcast and i in fact appealed to the md who i've interviewed in the past to know a little bit um and he hasn't even got back to my email so i'm thinking that's a no mm. sadly we have it on file we won't put it out because we which, don't we're which is, like again, is, is a little bit of a technicality for us because frankly we could put it out Whenever we wanted to, and that's kind of our decision. But more, yeah. more for the guy that we interviewed. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, we're, we're not in the we're way keep, of, of stay friendly with him. It's, people around. It's kind yeah. of more of a favour to him. So exactly. And, and hopefully, at some point, that all that situation will re-resolve itself, and sense and we will be come to, yeah. and we'll put it out there. And it's a really good, really good listen, actually. So I hope mm. we do get it out there. Yeah, there's there's always hope somewhere. <laughs> just sometimes difficult to find it but we've done everything in our power and uh, unfortunately we've uh, computer says no at the moment but we will see we will see anyway um two other matters i think we should take a little uh a little break mm-hmm. and then we'll come back and we're going to be talking about something exciting that we're having published about the next issue and about wax stock <laughs> Oh, 
Hi, hope you've been enjoying this podcast. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you about a new book that myself and Ian have been putting together. It is called Hand Wash Only. It's 144 pages, A5 format, hardback. It is packed with pictures and diagrams and top tips and how-to guides and essentially covers everything in detailing in enough detail for pretty much any enthusiast and many a professional. It is there to guide you through from the very first pre-wash right the way to all the different LSP options, including lots of stuff on interior as well and stain removal and things like that. It's priced at $12.95 and is available on the Pro Detailer Magazine website at www.prodetailermagazine.com. Now, back to the podcast. And we're back. Um, as you have probably just heard, our big news of the quarter of the month, of the week, um, is that we have put a book together. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a bit of a backstory to this book. So um, uh, many years ago, uh, before COVID was a thing, in fact, two and a bit years ago, um, I got... That's it? it? I think so. It was December 19... No, it was October 19 when I first got the request. <laughs> So, yeah. For, for COVID. For COVID, yeah. Um, so, got approached by Haynes Publishing, um, which was a, 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 an honour and a pleasure to write a book on detailing. And um, so, I went down to them at Sparkford and chatted over and wrote a book from and took lots of photos of the book. And they had a typeset and we were ready to go to print. And uh, this was now 2020, and it was originally printed in uh, time for summer 2020, but it didn't get round to it. It was supposed to be coming out for the wax stock that year, wasn't it? It was supposed to be for wax stock that year, um, but that got COVIDed. And then early COVID times, um, Haynes got bought out by a big French company, and they said, we will... Uh, I have to do the accent. Yeah, we are. Huh? We will uh, definitely. No, it's racist. I won't. <laughs> it was Dutch as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, uh, basically, that we will keep printing because Behrman Haynes, uh, their big business is the online manual stuff that they do for manufacturers, really highbrow stuff. And the print is actually just a little team in a little office um, doing the doing print publication. And um, they said, whatever happens, we will continue with the print publication. And then six months later, I got a phone call from me, uh, the, my then unemployed editor who'd worked there for 30 years saying, oh, yeah, I've been sacked and everybody's been sacked and uh, they're not doing printing anymore. So um, managed to get uh, the manuscript off him. And then Ian came in and uh, he has made it pretty and added lots more bits and bobs and details and done it kind of in a way that we would want to do it without any kind of third-party involvement. So it's been pro detailified. Yeah, originally the book was aimed very much at a an, a, an absolute an absolute beginner's yeah. market um, as sort of you know, Christmas presents, things like that from your, your great auntie, which is great for Haynes demographic kind yeah. of thing, but that's not the kind of book that we, we really would want to put no, out ourselves. Exactly. We wanted to do a proper kind of all-encompassing detailing book that is accessible to the complete beginner, but useful for the reasonably experienced enthusiast, but still leave room potentially at the top end for a, a, a future highly advanced thing or something. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got ideas of other books that we want to do. So if this one works, we will, um, we will, we've got some fun ideas for kind of coffee table books and stuff like that but we won't go into that detail now anyway cycle forward and um we finally last month got it ready to go and it is currently printing down in portsmouth and um it is a hardback book of 144 pages plus cover with a really cool spot uv cover um and um pre-orders are available as you've heard and we're kind of excited about it pre-orders are available for probably another couple of days after this podcast goes out because then we'll have it and you'll be just ordering it yes well and the benefit of pre-ordering is that you won't get charged postage and so you'll save a quid or two at least mm. um that way so do pre-order it's on prodetailermagazine.com and um we really look forward to people's feedback on it as long as it's positive <laughs> and um it's up somebody um oh i can't remember it was some, somebody messaged the, the the page the other day uh after sending out an order to, oh can i give feedback my first response was no no <laughs> <laughs> i mean you can 
That's fine. No. <laughs> and this is why I deal with customer relations because <laughs> we get a, a lot of messages. We've had, you know, people who order and then 10 minutes later, oh, it hasn't arrived yet and stuff like that. So I, I do all the, the, the nicey, nicey stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm being facetious. We do actually quite like getting feedback, good, bad, or the ugly from uh, from readers because at the end of the day, it should Im- improves the product that goes out. It's not, exactly. not, not necessarily meaning we'll listen because <laughs> a lot of people, we, we, we've had people saying, oh, why do you keep on using funny fonts? Oh, because it's artistically pleasing to the eye. Oh, but I can't quite read that one. Well, get some glasses then, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we have a slightly different approach to customer care. I, I've got less backbone than you when it comes to that sort of thing. No, I just don't approach customer care. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but anyway, so it is, it's, it's, it's a cool book and it really does cover, you know, all the bases. Um, and it goes into quite some depth in certain bits. And it's got really useful bits like tables, for for example, if you've got a certain sort of stain on leather or fabric or whatever, it kind of it's a matrix that you can identify the right processes to get rid of it. Um, and um, kind of the lowdown on different everything from different pad machine types and all the rest of it. Um, did a lot more specialist photography for our version of it. So yes. the, the original stuff that went off was what Haynes wanted. And we thought, oh, OK, well, we'll do a little bit more bit more in-depth stuff for this yeah. and make it very staged so yeah we've got a long list of people who appear in it as well mm-hmm. um so yeah no it should be fun and that's as i say available for pre-order um and that leads us on to well we've got a lot this year is very busy for us we've got a lot happening so we are currently putting together the wax stock guide and we'll talk about wax stock in a bit um but we're doing some fun and funky things for that so when you turn up to wax stock uh, look at that guide show guide and you'll see the fruits of labors um but issue 15 obviously is a big thing now we decided to bump 15 to after wax stock because wax stock's early we normally come out july august and we felt we didn't want to rush it um and also it means we can talk about wax stock in 15 so um, 15, we're aiming for a release late July, um, and we've already been all over the place. So it starts obviously with the car care adventures. Mm-hmm. And to that end, we have been to France. We did the detailing show. In Tours. In Tours, which was, I really enjoyed that. It was a nice, it was a nice little event. I say little event. It was, it, it was, was actually bigger than, bigger than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of big names there. We had, um, there was Expel, had a nice little stand doing Expel uh, there. Guillaume. McLaren. Guillaume were there with their fantastic stand. And we got to meet Ives. Yes. And, um, I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but. How do you pronounce Yves? it? Eve. 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 I'd, I'd, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Um, and um, he, he showed me their really cool wax stick. Yes. Yeah. It was like oh. lip salve, but for, well, not, what do you call it? What, 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 what do, what do uh, women put on their faces with a little, like a Pritt stick? I mean, women don't put Pritt stick on their face, but you know what I mean. I'm just going to stay silent so you carry on talking. It's funny. <laughs> okay. Twist and go. A Pritt stick. Yeah. Twist and go like a Pritt stick. But big. But big for your car. Um, and, and yeah, that was, that was really, really cool. Really useful. And it's something I've been waiting to see come out for so long now. Yes. Uh, I think Dodo did something like that with Supernatural years ago. Okay. But again, with a lot of Dodo stuff, they, they preempt a lot and it doesn't take, Did, quite, yeah. quite take off. They're just too early to market with stuff. Yeah. Um, they're just too too innovative. Um, so that was fun. And it was good to see also, we, you know, like the Valet Pro guys came over from England. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alan Medcraft was there in force. Um, and lots of other kind of familiar, semi-familiar. It's good to get, you know, there are certain people who don't come over to the UK very often. So it was quite good to go there. We met Justina again. Mm-hmm. Um, I say we went over with Dave at the same yeah. time. We, we, uh, that's true. Yeah. We were pulled on the plane and everything like that. And stayed in the same hotel, went drinking together. Dave and I played a joke on the Valet Pro guys, which we probably best not talk about. Um, but it was hilarious. Um, I mean, you can talk about it if you really want. Well, I don't know. I don't think it would necessarily be appropriate, but it, no, and no, we'll, we'll 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 get them in trouble and and potentially ourselves in trouble. But anyway, it was just take it from me. It awesome set lads, me. Yeah, we were we were. It was the middle of the night in the middle of tours. Uh, we were hi- Dave and I were hiding behind pillars, watching them knock on a door that they thought they could get access to. Um, anyway, um, and we are and off- we met Ben as well from Fitech. Yes. Oh, what a lovely man. Really lovely. Yes. What a beard. Awesome beard. I noticed you've shaved most of yours off in shame, and I've completely shaved mine now. You, 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 you look 10 years younger. I, I've just... You can just count how many chins I've got now. It's terrible. Yeah, I know. That's, I'm, I get the same problem. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get back there, but then every time I have an important thing, like a PVD assessment or something that I have to go to, and I'm thinking, I don't necessarily think the tramp look is appropriate. Oh, look, it's Tallybert. <laughs> Um, and uh, yes, I'm 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 going to go full bush if I can. Though that's that's the aim. I, I do miss it. Um, not least because I can store half of sort of breakfast in there and then just f- sort of feed over over the rest of the day. Um, but we are going to Germany to decon, 
and uh, that is and Dave's coming too. It's he's he's following us, um, and that is going to be really fun. So um, there is it's run by the guys at Auto Le Caffin. Uh, which means paint monkey or something like that and um it's we went uh, the last one which was all before covid and everything and this one's going to be first even one. bigger the very first one yeah yeah because the the one before they did it online in the end didn't they yes they had to cancel it because the restrictions weren't being lifted fast enough yeah it was too high a risk uh, same as wax talk to be yeah. honest it was you know it could have run maybe but it was just too dicey um so that is really looking forward to that and we're going for quite a long stint we're going from so the show's on a saturday we're going to land on the thursday um i'm slightly nervous about this traditionally we hire cars or uh, more traditionally i drive over and so we've always got a nice safe reliable um steed or at least aa cover uh, and um this time Inns decided that we are going to go by train now. I did the not last all the way. Not all the way. No, we'll fly to, to Hanover yeah. and then train to Einbeck. Einbeck. And you see, the last time I took a train for is work, Einbeck or Gottingen. What one of them's where color lock is, and one of them's where I don't know. I but think, shall we make a think, point of trying Einbeck. to figure that out before we go? Well, probably. Yeah. I think it's. I Einbeck. mean, the trains only go to one or the other place. Okay. Well, I mean, the reason I'm nervous is Soft 99 launched a new Fuso a number of years ago, 2017, 16, something like that. And they had an evening do at a really cool museum in the centre of Berlin. And I flew to the cheap airport, which is outside of Berlin, and decided to get a train in. So I hopped on the Well, first of all, um, I followed Google to um, where the train station was, and there only appeared to be buses there. And none of the numbers... Turns out it was a bus station. Turns out it was a bus station, yeah. And there was a little tiny door which went to an underground train station. And it took me half an hour to figure that out and I was approaching lots of random people on the street then I get down there and um, I see a train with a number on that roughly proportions to my I had a free train travel ticket as a as a tourist strange enough to get around Berlin and so I hopped on a train and thought wow I'm doing training um, so to speak and um, anyway about 45 minutes later and about an hour and a half before the show started uh, I realized that I was then in Leipzig which is lovely. I've been to Leipzig before, but Leipzig isn't Berlin, and Berlin is not only where I started, but it's also where I needed to be. Um, and then I thought, frankly, I thought bugger um, many times over. So I then hopped off that train and on a train going in the opposite direction, at which point a ticket collector came around and I waved my Berlin city pass, and he laughed. Well, no, he didn't laugh. He kind of scoffed. Stupid Englishman. And in a Dutch uh, accent. In a Dutch accent. Yeah. Have you heard the, the yeah German trails? Train service, they? they are. Uh, and um, it charged a proportion that charged me an awful lot of money for a ticket for non-paying of ticket, and then to get to Berlin. And of course, he was the one German who didn't speak English. Um, so I was sort of trying to make impressions of classic cars in the centre of Germany and in the centre of Berlin, rather, and saying it's like at the Berlin Wall, but north. Um, I never studied German at school. And so the only German I know really are rude German words, which aren't very useful when trying to get directions. So I did what I always do when I panic in a foreign situation and speak French. Uh -huh. So I asked in French if I could get to the centre of Berlin and how much it would cost. And um, I don't know what he said, something. Anyway, so I was late for the show. Um, it went on till two in the morning. And then I decided more sensibly to Uber back to the airport for a flight at four in the morning. So I had two hours sleep. Um, it was a monumental thing. But anyway... Hopefully the, Ubers in Germany are better than they are in France because we had a horrible time in France. No, no, they're not. I was, it, was a, it was a Toyota Previa, not bad, lots of space. He did 30 kilometres an hour and it took about an hour to get back to the hotel. It, it was in France when we took the Uber and the guy said he was from Sudan. And I said, oh, north or south? And he just kind of looked at me and the, the conversation moved on. There was no north or south. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he said he was... A, two different countries now, mate. Sorry. He, he managed servicing for Toyota, but he was driving a Peugeot that was overheating. It was a nearly new car, and every warning light engaged was. I was in the front because obviously being appropriate sized, and every single dial and thing was wrong. The car was about to explode, and he was like, "Yes, I've worked for ten years in in, in running Toyotas." So he like, was going to be starting a yogurt business. That was it. A yogurt. It was it. It was yes. We learned a lot. I have to admit, it, for, for for a five minute journey, I, I I feel like I know the guy intimately. Now. Well, it was about thirty five, except for which country he's from. We don't know which country, and he said he he studied at Oxford University, and I asked him which college, and um, 
I th- I think he it said might. yes. He said yes. <laughs> so I think I think he means Brooks. Um, but anyway, uh, that was all fun. So we've got we've got Germany on the thing, which we may or may not make. And then of course we got Waxstock. Um, mm-hmm. What else? CCA. I've been to the NEC restoration show. That was fun. Yeah. Met the guys at Car Gods. Um, met uh, someone doing. I can't remember the name of the company now, but they're doing Sol Gel for cars, and they're kind of billing it as like a ceramic coating, but not a ceramic coating, but it'd be done at home. And they were they were uh, not they're into cars, but it wasn't a car care company mm-hmm. so it was an interesting conversation with their actual chemist um but he did say like so we thought we'd just try it on a car and i put it on my son's bmw and it was really good so oh, okay you know there's more to research than that <laughs> um but it's still interesting and i'm going to be looking into the chemistry of it all and seeing whether sol gel has uh, a place um what else have we got um in terms of CCA, there ain't much yet that's confirmed, apart from all of the, the We're trying to get wax stock and decon and everything out of the way first and try and cram a little bit into the <laughs> six weeks after that. <laughs> that's going to be fun. Um, and uh, well, in other sections, in the showcase, we've got uh, a wrap, which we'll talk about in a second. We've got, um, interestingly, an interview with uh, a celebrity chef in Hawaii. Um, yeah, where do we find him? Um, who only really wants to polish cars, but he makes all his money as a celebrity chef, and then he likes to polish his truck and stuff like that, and he's part of a community in Hawaii about polishing cars. And I said we really ought to go out and interview him on site, and uh, we then... You just looked. have to pay for the plane tickets, and we'd be there. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and so we did it by email in the end. Um, <laughs> and um, tragically, but it's an interesting interview, interesting guy, charismatic, um, so there's that to look forward to. Uh, we also... Uh, followed uh, Valet Pro on their ceramic coating development journey. Now, a lot of people develop ceramic coatings by phoning up the Far East and saying, can I have some ceramic coating? And um, then they go to a label company. Don't, don't do the voice. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Definitely not. Um, and uh, But no, VP have done it kind of properly and they've done lots of research and they tested all the competition and sent it off to SGS, who are like a, a, a testing company in Cheshire somewhere, I think. Um and so that was actually really interesting. So there's an article on that. Um, and then we've got your article on branding that has nearly been published twice before. Four times, I think. Four times. Keep on writing it. Yeah, <laughs> it keeps so on it getting bigger. Me, it's, it's, such, it's, it's an article that's, that we can kind of put out any time. Yeah, it's one that always gets bumped because it's self-contained. Yes. And then we'll suddenly get something in or something bigger than we thought or we've forgotten. We can't count very well. And with 132 pages, mm-hmm. you know, we run out of fingers. At, at the, we sometimes have to team team up. And between all our fingers and toes, we can get to 40. So you can imagine anything over 40, it's hit and miss. Get someone from the forest team, we can go up to 46. <laughs> Um, and um, so we've got that. And then the showcase is a car that we've seen in the showcase before. In fact, it's Uncrashable 3. Um, and we went up to New Look Detailing and got it wrapped because the paint is beyond saving. Um, and uh, Kelly Harris offered to respray it. But uh, despite many sort of offers to dump an old Subaru at his premises, nothing's happened as yet. So we give him a three-year respite while co- the uh, the thing's on there. But we're going to have a look at some um, protection options for vinyl and things like yeah. that with this. So we are actually going to use it and abuse it a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. And things like, you know, if there's an engine fire, can you like protect the vinyl from on top and stuff like that? Shovel ice. <laughs> well, dry ice is something else that we may or may not be involved with. Mm-hmm. So that'll be interesting. Uh, we've done the ice blaster before, but this is kind of more hands on and more in the UK. But uh, yeah, we've just talked about them before and how they are a thing. And yeah, uh, with Jason going over to Slovakia, Slovakia. Yeah, somewhere like that. Somewhere like yeah. that. Yeah. I'll put that in post. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we got that. And uh, so actually, that brings on maybe a little fleet update we haven't done in a while. Well, there's one more thing to talk about. And that is the mega test. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. Because obviously we spoke about that earlier, how John came over and did some some of his initial testing, and it's currently out and about in the world with... With loads. So testers? Uh, 10 plus, in fact. So we've got... Um, there's the car boutique guys, so we've got the, lots of interesting stuff. So it's Speed 6 chaps. Adam's already sent his stuff in, very organised. We like that. Thank you, Adam. Um, and uh, quite a few others have been posting lots of... Um, really detailed long-term reviews which is great and it's bizarre because the first time we did a mega test like this was way back issue two and we had a real problem with people just not filling in all the tests and doing it from the enthusiast side and professionals pretty good we've got it the other way around the enthusiast has been absolute ace and it's on a um very fancy um i'm going to say t6 i'm not a vagist so i don't know uh, do we call them no we can't call them vagus anymore i've got no, trouble with that Vag- no dubbers ah dubbers but not rubber dubbers, and um, he's he's got it on his 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 truck, and it's it's doing all sorts of tests, and he's testing it with other products, retail products as well, which is interesting. 
um, including one from Infinity Wax that seems to be doing pretty well too. So anyway, loads of feedback from the enthusiast side of things. It is with Soft99 um, and uh, Mr. Shelton, Dr. Shelton probably. Uh, a mountain in Japan somewhere. Yeah, at the, at the Soft99 testing facility. We've got it with Sean at Concept Chemicals, which I need to chase up because I haven't heard a dicky bird from him, but um, I am sure he'll be doing stuff. Um, and Vinny in Holland. and um, our, Sent over to the States. Yeah, Scott at Detail... Division. Division. And I was getting there. And um, he's going to be doing some testing there. <laughs> yeah, just, just having to talk. Um, and yeah, so it's all over all over the shop. And we are going to be, after Wax Talk, after we've got all that done, we will be then chasing down the testers and getting the results if they haven't already come in and putting that together. At Wax Talk itself, we may well have the opportunity for you uh, to come and dip your ding dong in the wax and rub it against something and see what you think. I probably should have thought about that before I spoke. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking for as much kind of user feedback as possible. So, for example, at Wax Talk, we might have a panel or a car, and you can come and dip your finger into any of the three unnamed waxes and tell us with a chit in a box, like when you check out at Tesco's and you choose which charity you want to support, um, which one you prefer. And then we have some blind information, um, blind testing information from uh, your kind of user experience. This, and this is the whole point of this aspect of the test. So we went, we went through um, our own sort of mini tests on the wax is in issue 14, 14 yep. and came to, I wouldn't say inconclusive results, but we, came, we busted a lot of the myths and found some quite interesting aspects of the wax that we weren't expecting. So rather than call it a day at that and say, eh, we don't know, mm. um, this gives it a chance to go out into the wider world and actually see not only if... Um, graphene has an appreciable benefit. impact on yeah. on how wax and works. what that benefit is that's but really really important in general as well how it compares to what's already on the market so this is why it's going out against a um a custom blended sio2 wax and a, a non-additive mm. wax as it were because if it comes back and 90 percent of people can't tell the difference that is a data metric right there if every single person thinks that the wax is better than the sio2 and the graphene that's a metric right there it's mm. not about saying purely is is, is graphene a thing it's, does it work does it do anything um it's about seeing what um what interpretation people have over these tests and frankly if these tests mean anything when compared side by side yeah if there's anything discernible but also if graphene has a niche so for example yesterday when i was up uh, in a, a pbd assessment somebody brought along a uh, something called dream maker which is the successor to bead maker mm -hmm. which is the renny doyle pns yes, thing which yeah. and um the interesting thing there is it's billed as no protection. It is purely wet look. It's purely for that kind of initial application. Uh, and there aren't many products like that. I mean, I suppose it's what glazes used to do, but they were more a masker. Um, but my, the, 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 like the show car waxes. Exactly. But now show car waxes last. I mean, they, they, the wax has to be able to do everything. But I'm intrigued by if... Um, it comes back and says, well, look, durability isn't improved by graphene. This isn't improved. This isn't improved. But if you want something, water behavior, gloss, something like that, it knocks everything out and it finds its own niche. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, we, we, we're also running a couple of other side tests on this and we've got a, uh, a normal ceramic coat and a graphene infused ceramic coat. Yes. And if we based our assumptions off what graphene did in the wax test, um, it would have been incorrect compared to what we've seen. Yeah, in coatings, the they coatings. behave differently, and and really that's, do, and that that is a surprise so far. And it's still it's still under under testing and everything like yeah. that. And you know, they they are still working, but that's going to be quite an interesting little side side test. Mm. And we've got at the same time, I've got a cupboard specifically dedicated to graphene products, which has just been added to by Zirconite, who bought out their uh, three six five product, which is a, a sprayable. Uh, graphene coating mm -hmm. as it's billed as um, and I presume 365 so about a year sort of thing so we'll put that except in leap years except in leap years didn't and think about that did they marketing <laughs> <laughs> oh dear and um, I've got various others from Constellation and lots of other people so we might do a graphene product sort of review in the in the new product section or something like that specifically kind of with a theme i don't know we'll, 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 it's all liberty hall at the moment but we will be doing some things just to kind of add more substance so that's cool um well i think it'd be nice to do a little fleet update can at do. this point yeah it, it'll be mostly me i fear because your, your mercedes now has brakes that work which helps no, my, my, my brakes always worked. I mean, I, have, I haven't actually put on the discs yet because both of my T30 uh, torque spits 
broken. Ah. Uh, one of which broke on trying to get trying to get the old discs off. Well, you see my toolbox there. Yes. Yeah, it's locked. Um, so um, that mostly made of cheap, <laughs> very clean as well, and unused. And no, it's not it's covered in crap. Um, uh, do you know what all the drawers do yet? Yeah. Yeah. I've got my bone saw on the bottom one, just says you know. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I've I've really done to mine, apart from running this coating test on it, is um, take the back bumper off. Yeah, why did you do that again? Because my my, uh, my rear floor filled up with water. Oh they've yes. They got um, As they got vents on the back underneath the bumper. If you know, when when you shut the door, all that air has to go somewhere, and it, if it doesn't have these bumper vents on the back, it uh, results in the glass blowing out. So that's why they build these vents in behind the bumper, just as a. Um, uh, but you, but you, yours had got water releases. ingress. You've got a soggy yeah, bottom. Yeah, um, unfortunately, the the seals around these go. It's a it's a known problem on the uh, on the A class. Um, so yeah, one Saturday I dragged the bumper off. It's got some new ones from Mercedes, which weren't extortionate. Wow. Which I was massively surprised at, but after I got a quote through for a service on it from them. <laughs> yes, I got a quote, because I, I needed a B service on it. Right. I got a quote through from them. Uh, B service, 685 quid plus Eesh. that. Eesh. Which, for what they, were, what they were actually doing, that's, that's no belts or anything like that. That's just changing fluids. Yeah. Ended up going to a specialist who did it for 280 pounds. Why didn't you do it yourself? I do. Books, I, myself, I, I can't stamp books. You can't I, I can stamp. stamp books, but nobody likes my potato cutouts. <laughs> and especially because it's digital, you just get potato all over the computer, <laughs> and then you've just got potato with computer. Uh, so yeah, I went to a, a specialist with that. But no, the uh, the the bumper vents were literally just um, pop them in and smother them with tiger seal. Okay. Which so you've done a pro job there? Yeah, absolute pro job, and I used <laughs> load of the uh, the Lano guard behind it as well. Oh well, that's good thinking. Yeah. yeah. While, while the bumper is off, everything that's probably going to rust because Mercedes yeah. um, has now got a coating of Lanagard on there. Well, that's, that's good yeah. to hear. Yeah. It's good to hear. Apart from that, I haven't done anything. Well, an update, actually, that that's a nice seg- segue, segue, I don't know, into um, the Lanagard treatment that we did on Boris. Uh-huh. So Boris, the apocalypse repaired outback. Um, has been making many, many creaky noises of late and rattling noises. And we went down to Dorset. More. F- f- yeah, more. more. More rattling noises. Yeah, no, but noises. really quite worrying. It sounds literally like the brake disc is wobbling, which it isn't, which is the more thing. Anyway, so the rear end has been completely pollied, um, and the front I took the wheels off and had a good old rummage and play with a, with a um, crowbar and found that every single bush at the front, despite being poly, is worn beyond repair. I can I can fit a Not finger. Not just put on. No, I haven't put no, them on. They're in a box ones. over there. That's my job That's for Easter. <laughs> it's Good Friday today, by the way, chap. So Easter tomorrow, Easter Saturday, is going to be mostly playing with bush. Um, and uh, I can fit my finger between the D bush on the anti roll bar at the front and the anti roll bar itself. And I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be able to do that. But the good news is, and you see, my concern was the creeks were getting so bad, I was convinced the sills, which were rusty and had been welded, had sort of got rusty again. Because rust is coming through the back doors. As in, when you open the back doors, you can see rust pretty much everywhere. Um, and um, obviously, we lanagarded that. And so I took the sills off the side to make sure that the whole frame hadn't rusted and the creek was just the monocoque falling apart. And the lanagard's done its job. There is no new rust on, on the underside. So that's good. I mean, I think it's fitting you're using Easter to try and bring something back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming up 310,000 miles, have you know? Pretty good going. Um, so I was terrified. We were even to the point I was chatting with my partner about um, that if we did have to, uh, you know, if the monocoque's completely gone, it's gone, and we'd have to get a different car. And it was depressing because we couldn't think of anything. I was thinking Land Cruiser VX, but they cost silly money. And uh, we ended up on a first gen D5 XC90 Volvo for fifteen hundred quid. Mm-hmm. Um, good cars. Yeah, but very boring. Volvo. I mean, I, I love the new Volvo. The, the new XC90 is lovely. Yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous. And yeah, but that can actually be quite ex- exciting as well. Yeah, my budget's 1,500 quid. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, that ain't happening. Um, but anyway, so uh, the good news is Boris is not dead, uh, but he does, he's in need of bush, and I have many white line and poly bush and the other one, Powerflex, ready to go on. Um, so uh, hopefully that will be fixed this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and what are you getting rid of? Uh, well, this is kind of tragic. I don't know if this has been known, but um, uh, to save polar bears a number of years ago, two years ago, I downgraded from a 
for my daily drive from a 4.2 V8 uh, in Fritz, the S8, to a 3.7 V8 in VOD, the A8. Now the eco version. The eco version, exactly. I thought I was being pretty selfless. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting an award from Greenpeace any time, although I'm starting to weigh now. It's been two years and nothing's even happened. I was hoping for like a ceremony with a polar bear or something, or a penguin at least. I think they give you a polar bear after a while. Oh, I'd like a polar bear. That would be awesome. I mean, it would kill me, but I'd still, I'd like it. And... Um, Anyway, it turns out that as a as a as a uh, family, we spend seven hundred quid on petrol a month, and um, that's an awful lot of money. So we've decided to go electric. Then I went on. Oh, you spent seven hundred quid on petrol back before it went through the roof. How, before, much, how much do you think you spend now on petrol? <laughs> well, I mean, given the increases, we're talking over a thousand pounds. So um, I think that's a little excessive. So we decided to go electric, and in November we ordered. So I went on Googled electric cars, and my God, they're expensive, and they're terrible i mean i want a honda e but it doesn't fit anything and it mm. goes about three feet I'd like a tesla but i'd have to sell well everything um and if you want to buy a renault zoe don't expect to get to 10 to uh to 60 within sort of 13 seconds well they bought a new zoe but then i don't you think have I to rent the battery as well i always haven't already have enough sort of erectile problems i drove around in a zoe i think it would just completely demasculate me um but uh so we settled on an mg not because it's british or anything because it's not it's chinese and uh at the time it was about 25 obviously on a pcp deal um to um get 250 miles it's a wagon so you can fit stuff in it it does not 60 in 7.2 seconds which mm-hmm. is half reasonable i went and drove one in wales bizarrely and not bad um really um and then it said we'll deliver it in March. And so I thought, great, because we get the government grant for the, both the charging socket and for buying an electric car for being, you know, super green. Um, and then it got delayed to um, June. And now I've just heard it's going to be delayed till August. And the worst bit of all of that is that I lose out on all the grants, basically. So I've got absolutely, it's going to cost me basically two grand more as a consequence of this delay, which is infuriating um but in order to achieve that i've had to sell cars so foz the lovely forester has sadly moved on but to a friend so that's good um and um vod the aa or for its cs8 uh, basically oh, is it one or the other it's one or the other both. yeah so i'm going to get um obviously vod's looking very pretty courtesy of james and um that with a clean will go up and that'll be i think five or something and then fritz which is the manual converted s8 d2 um which has been in dry storage for three years i went and started it up two weeks ago mm-hmm. yeah go? started wonderfully engine took a bit of a crank but it got there um and my dad has been sort of starting it and moving it forward and backwards he's been driving up and down a driveway um every sort of month or so in it uh but the power steering pipe somewhere gave way and it spewed um power steering fluid everywhere and there is a local garage down where it is and i said oh would you be able to just sort of recommission it fix here power steering and they build themselves as a specialist and not as an audi specialist but no, as just, a specialist. just generally specialist yeah well they're actually we know they're, cars they're a mercedes specialist they have really cool open this really funky place we ought to go there autobahn i think it's called anyway and we said they have power steering's gone there like, oh the one on the uh, on the end of the t-junction yeah, exactly yeah, that's that. really cool it is and they're, they're having lots of events and they've got a new field as well so it's like caffeine a machine but local we've got a new field <laughs> yeah seriously in hampshire we, we looked around it was just there <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, Ooh, like that. <laughs> he just appeared. Um, but anyway, long story short, they said, no, we can't fix that anymore because the parts are unavailable and it's going to cost you a fortune. So I'm going to have to somehow Is get it the pump to... pump or the pipe? I think it's a pipe. I looked at the pump. It's How pretty dry. Is it to find a pipe that works? Uh, because Audi. Because Audi D2. Because Audi from the 90s. It's a pipe's a pipe. A pi- no, I hear you. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked underneath because also the front suspension sagged so much now. And I don't know why, but it sagged. I'm really not doing a good job of selling this damn car. Um, sagged so much that I can't even fit a, I can fit a hand or an arm underneath, but I can't look. And I haven't got a low-entry jack at that place where it's stored. So, yeah. Anyway, so Fritz, we need to get him fixed up. And then he's one of, I think, two or three manual converted right-hand drive S8s in the world. Um, very special. And I'm going to put them both on sale at a fair price and whichever one sells first will sell first and I'll keep the other because I want to stay in the A8 club because it's so much fun although their annual meet is the same day as Waxstock this year so they're, and they're going to the borders of Scotland which I really want to do but Waxstock anyway talking to which talking to which uh, yeah so Waxstock is first weekend in June and obviously Queen's we're going to be there Jubbly. Uh, Queen's Jubbly 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 yep mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, we're going to be there just in front of the stage. Uh, we are just working, in fact, on what we're going to do with our stand. We're thinking of having maybe some demonstrations going on, uh, be uh, bringing in the team and seeing what we can do. Um, and it's it's going to be a big one. We're, we're, obviously, we're doing the show guide, so we know who's coming. And I've actually printed out a list because you challenged me to speed can read you do all it in exhibitors. A, in a minute. In a minute. So, um, so let's go. So three, two, one. 
ABP, AutoCare, Aenzo, AM Details, Angel Wax, Auto Glance, Auto Bright Direct, Car Care, Netherlands, Car Cam, Car Gods, Car Scope, Car Tech, Clean Chani, Color Lock, Dodo Juice, Dual Auto Care, Envy Car Care, Ferrecla, G3 Pro, Flex, Garage Style UK, Garage Therapy, Glean, G Technic, Gion, Honeyford Detailing, I6 Automotive, Infinity Wax, Juicy Details, Dual Ultra, KBS Coatings, Lake Country, Liquid Elements, Lister, Maguire's UK, Motor Geek, Naziol, ODK, Omega Products, uh, Chemical Guys, uh, Repairs, Sam's Detailing, Shell Concept, Slash Safe Products, Slash SB Autopia, uh, Sir Shine Lock, Sock 99, Sonax, Speed 6, Spotless Water, SSR, Stain Guard, Steiner Gloss, Detail Kitchen, The Rag Company, Ultimate Finish, Nanolex, Chemicalsy, Valet Pro, FSUK, Woo Woos, and Zirconite and Zvizur. Nice. How long did that take? Is that an under a minute? Awesome. Uh, you're, you're, you're missing one off of that, though. Uh, well, yeah, Pro, De- Pro Detail <laughs> Magazine. That's a good point. Um, so, yeah, we've been sending emails out to all these companies to, to get details for the... Um, uh, for the car guide, for the for the show guide. Uh, if you've received the email and haven't filled in the form, please do it. It's really, really necessary for us to be able to do it. Then. It's going to help you. It helps us. It doesn't cost a bean. Anyway, enough of my moaning. Um, lots of stuff going on. There'll be loads of releases, I think, because post-COVID, obviously, there's lots of stuff that's been queued up to come out. Um, so I think there'll be lots of interesting things going on there, as well as the normal deals and discounts and all that jazz that happens at Wexstock. We go, well, we go because we're kind of we're obliged to go and we want to go, but it's it's kind of, it's it's a thing, but a lot of people go for um, socials and catching up with people mm-hmm. and meeting people, and I think it's quite seeing people in person, seeing people uh-huh. in person, and also post pandemic, you know, do a quick head count really. Um, the, um, but it's it's a good it's a good thing for the industry, and I, it, it's an interesting thing. So having been to the detailing show in France and to Decon in Germany, we've got this kind of I want to call it a trinity. I don't know if I'm going to upset god squatters but a trinity of car shows of car detailing shows specifically and they've all got their different angles wax talk is is definitely the biggest um and um decon has maybe got more of a professional detailing more of an educational educational side to it yeah um and the detailing show is kind of a hybrid of the two um and so i think it's it's nice having that kind of three-way and it was um talking to the the detailing show had better food yes yeah, detailing shows. Rico Arena, whatever food. you call now, if you're listening, sort your kitchen out, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to admit, with the detailing show, getting there from the centre of tours was, well, as we found with our, our Sudanese Uber, was was high risk. And we actually walked it for about an hour and a half back to the hotel. Oh, it was only about half an hour back. Felt like an hour and a half. We were going through ghetto France. It was I was sick. It was all right for you. You were sat looking cool and ghetto-y. I was sat in full work gear with a, thousands of pounds worth of camera around my back. I've got lots of... Well, you were the sacrifice. If, if we went south, we'd just kick you and run <laughs> yeah i don't need to outrun the bear i just need to outrun you um so uh yeah they're, they've all got their different angle but uh, wax talk obviously is the first started 2012 so this can be i was gonna say this would be wax talk 10 but it can't be because we've had two years of pandemic so it's, it's wax talk eight um but yeah i mean make sure you come along and also we have got um tons of tickets is, is to help us along doing the guidance stuff. we get a lot of tickets and so we are currently offering tickets at 20 quid including postage uh, bear in mind they're 25 on the door and you also get show guide and we will send those out the week before we've had lots of emails people who got them and it, and saying well haven't I got mine yet well because we need to publish the show guide before we can send you the show guide so that's going to come out a week before the show and we'll send it to you um, uh, the other option is if you want your ticket straight away we do a ticket and a t-shirt for 25 pounds which is kind of cool and they're the limited edition uh, pro detailer t-shirts that we did a of years ago uh-huh. um and we'll have some new designs coming out in due course but we need to move these ones on so that's a bit of a bargain and if you get a mega pack which is 50 quid you can also get a mega pack either with a free t-shirt or with a free wax stock ticket i.e 25 quid i basically half price on a mega pack which is a bit of a bargain all on the site um so there's my commercial hat um i'm going to put that on the table um and hard hat you've got this. <laughs> it was yes <laughs> it's a bit ymca hat. um anyway uh, what else do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about, um, well, where are we going? What about the next series, the next series of, of podcasts? Next it, series of podcasts, we're hoping to be releasing those uh, in, the uh, in the summer. Let's keep it vague. Yeah, it's going to be in the summer because it just, it just depends on how much time we uh, it, it takes doing 15, really, and how much we can slip in around doing that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, we record these a little bit in advance and try and release them. Yeah, they can't be too in advance, but this year, because we, we did some... When did we go to, to Italy? Was that the beginning of this year or the end of last? End of last year. That was November, uh, November last year. November last year. So, yeah, that was... When that came out, it had already been three, four months, so we mm-hmm. need to try and keep that to a minimum. Um, what we're thinking of doing, however, 
And although we've got this rather useful studio uh, over in Not Swindon um, with people coming to us, we are considering going on the road, at least in abroad, to go and get some more kind of uh, insightful podcasts from foreign people. So yeah, anything, anybody you think we should interview for the next one? Do yes. do do, uh, do come and tag us on a on a Facebook page or something like that. Yeah, do it on the on, on on the Facebook or the Instagrams and tag the person as well, so that we know exactly who you're talking to. Because if you say, "Oh, we should interview Frank," and I then Google Frank, it's gonna take it's gonna be a, a big process. Um, and uh, we'd love to talk to interesting people. We we get a lot of people asking to be on there, but when people ask themselves, we, <laughs> we're generally sitting there thinking, "Yeah, mm. if you're tagged and we don't interview you, uh, awkwardly sorry." But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're just interesting people. That's the that's the key is interesting people. Um just kind of stands in contrast to us. Um but anyway, thank you very much for listening. And it is goodbye for series three from me, Bert, and Goodbye for series three for me, Ian. Ta-da. 